For this lesson, we're going to move our discussion of lines from R2 to R3. And in some cases, that's not going to make much of a difference at all. But in other cases, it's actually going to be quite a profound change. So I would draw your attention, first of all, the first one I have here, which is we had an equation for a line in R2, which is the form that we're most familiar with in all likelihood at this point. And that's the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. It turns out that this equation has no equivalent expression in R3. There is no way to define something as simply as just slope and y-intercept in R3. Both of those concepts lose their meaning in three dimensions. So we won't be using that form anymore. On the other hand, the vector form is actually unchanged in the sense that it's going to continue to be the position vector is going to be equal to the initial position vector plus some scalar multiple of a direction vector. And I really should have included here that t is a member of the reals. That scalar multiple can take on any value, positive or negative, including zero. The biggest difference here is that because we're in R3, our position vector is now a three-dimensional position, so we have to include now a z component. Our initial position has to have an initial z component, and our direction vector is made up of an x, y, and z component. That leads to number three, which is parametric vector, or sorry, parametric equations, or the parametric form of an equation, where I take the x component of my position vector, or my resultant, is going to be set made up of the initial x coordinate plus whatever effect the x coordinate of the direction vector has and the y coordinate and the z coordinate so these these two number two and three flow quite naturally one from the other and then lastly the cartesian form it turns out that the cartesian form actually exists in R3 but and and how I've changed that form just to remind you the Cartesian equation of a line in R2 would be written this way so ax plus y plus c equals 0 so this is kind of a logical extension to that ax plus by plus C, cz plus d equals 0 I'm introducing the z part but it turns out this is no longer the equation of a line. This now represents a plane in R3, which is something we're going to take a look at a little bit later in this unit. So the Cartesian form is still there, but it takes on a significantly different meaning. The last form I want to talk to you about, this is I'm introducing a new form now, and this is known as the symmetric form for the equation of a line. If we start off with the parametric equations, which I described on the previous page, so that's already familiar. The only thing that's new here is the fact that we've introduced the z parameter, or the z component. t is common to all of these. So technically, I could actually rearrange every any one of these and every one of these. For example, if we focus on this first one, I could take the x naught to the left side, so that would become x minus x naught, and then I would divide both sides by a, and I would end up with t all by itself. I could do the same thing here with the y coordinate from the parametric equation to get t all by itself, and I could get t all by itself with the z coordinates. And since these values of t, they represent the same variable, that means t equals t equals t, and that means that these right sides are all equal to each other as well. And this is known as the symmetric form for the equation of a line. Notice that in writing it this way, when I divided by A or divided by B or divided by C, I had to assume that A and B and C were not equal to zero. If A or B or C is equal to zero, then I'm going to have to look at that portion of the symmetric form a bit differently. 
So for our first exercise, determine vector parametric and symmetric equations for the line passing through these two points. And in this case, I actually think it makes a lot of sense to do this in the order in which it's provided. So let's start off with a vector equation. And the basic form of the vector equation, which hasn't changed from R2, is going to look like that. So we need to figure out the posi initial position vector. Well, the initial position vector can be the initial position vector can be the vector that points to either of these given points. So it could be the vector from the origin to the point P, or it could be the vector from the origin to the point Q. And so I'm just going to go ahead and arbitrarily choose OP. So that is going to be negative 2, 3, and 5. But it would be equally good if we chose OQ. The other thing we need is we need our direction vector. Now, in R2, when we were talking about the direction vector, we would relate that to the slope. So the slope was delta y over delta x, and then our direction vector was delta x comma delta y. So there was that very strong relationship. In R3, it's going to be a similar idea, and I'm sure many of you can actually see where I'm going to go with this, which is it's going to be our delta x, delta y, and the last thing we're going to add in there is our delta z. So what is our delta x? I'm going to use another, actually, you know what, another way that I want to express this, just so you have another option. Um, Another way to express this is actually to say the direction vector is going to actually be the vector PQ. So that might be another way for you to look at it. And that's actually more in line with what we've done in the past. And the definition of the vector PQ is OQ minus OP. So whether you think of it this way, delta X, delta Y, delta Z, or OQ minus OP, that both of those are going to get you to the same answer. And so my vector is going to be delta x or OQ minus OP. That's going to be negative 2 minus negative 2. And then it's going to be 4 minus 3. And then it's going to be negative 1 minus 5. And I just wrote the answer there, 6. It's negative 1 minus 5. Negative 2 minus negative 2 is negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. Negative 1 minus 5 is equal to negative 6. And that is my direction vector. So that means now I can actually write my vector form. Let's write it this way. Let's write it as x, y, and z. So my general position vector is going to be made up of my initial position vector plus t times my direction vector. And so there we have our answer in vector form. Now to go from vector form to, to uh, parametric form is actually quite simple, especially with the way I've written it out here. The x coordinate is equal to the initial x value or x component which is negative 2 plus t times 0 and so I could write that as 0t but we don't normally write something multiplied by 0 that way so in this case we end up with x equals negative 2 then our y component is going to be the initial position of 3 plus t times 1. Well, that's just t. Let's extend this page. I'm just going to move this down a little bit more so there's some more separation here from part a. And then my, and actually I think I'll move that over. And then my z is going to be an initial position of 5. And that's going to be t times negative 6, which is minus 6t. So there are my parametric equations for this. And now finally for C, I will remind you of the form 
of symmetric equations because this is the part that's really quite new and it's not completely intuitive. Now, and we also had written that a, b, and c were not supposed to be equal to zero. And the a, b, and c are coming from the direction vector, a, b, and c, just to remind you where all of this stuff is coming from. So you could remember this form, and you could just go ahead and try to fill in values for it, or you could remember how we arrived at symmetric form and the way we did it is we rearranged our parametric equations for t. Now, regardless of which way you do this, you may be seeing that there's a potential problem here. And one of the problems is that this a value, which is the direction component for the x direction, well, it's equal to 0. And as you can see here in this parametric form, there is no t component. So I'm actually now going to, in another color, I'm just going to put in a reminder of that, that that's plus 0t. So as a result, this first one, there's nothing more we can write about this. So we actually have to write this one in the form x equals negative 2. There's, there's no, no more information I can get from this. The x value is always negative 2. Now, whether you choose to rearrange these or whether you remember this form is up to you. Um, I'm going to rearrange it just so you can see that we end up y equals 3 plus t. So we end up in the same place. I want to isolate t so I get y minus 3 equals t. And then for this one, I started with z equals 5 minus 6t and I get z minus 5 equals negative 6t, you might have been tempted to bring the t to the other side and then divide. I would caution you not to do it that way. I would recommend that you always arrange this so that you have a positive coefficient on the main variables, on the x, the y, and the z. And so in that case, when I divide here, I'm actually going to end up with z minus 5 over negative 6. And the reason why that form might be preferable is because, so now let's go ahead and let's write out our symmetric equation. It's x equals negative 2, and this is just a thing that has to sit there by itself. Then we take the parts that actually are equal to t. We end up with y minus 3 is equal to z minus 5 over negative 6. And the reason why we want, we want to write it this way is because this is y minus 3 over 1 and that negative 6, the way this is formed actually gives me some information about the direction vector. Because this could not be written in a symmetric form, it tells me the direction vector is 0. Here this is just a value over 1, so that's the y component. And by writing this z with a positive coefficient, it forces me to have my uh, z component of the direction vector ready to go in the denominator. So even though we typically don't want to carry negative numbers in the denominator, in this case I actually think there's a good argument for leaving the negative in the denominator. Okay, and now just to finish up, let's do an example where we go the other direction. We start with the symmetric equation, and then we're going to determine the vector and parametric equations. Now, from here, again, I think it's worth it to just to remind you of the form of the symmetric equation. So in this form, the a, b, c is my direction vector, and I've got x minus x naught. x naught is my initial position vector. So from here, I can tell that my direction vector, because I don't have any complications here with any of these being 0, 
my direction vector is 5, 3, and 7. And my initial position vector, you have to keep in mind this minus. This is x minus x naught. So my initial position vector, this is x minus what? This is x minus 3. This one is actually y minus negative 2. That's how we ended up with a positive here. So this is actually negative 2. And this is z minus negative 5. And so my vector equation is equal to my initial position vector 3, negative 2, negative 5 plus some scaling coefficient t multiplied by my direction vector. We use t for our scaling coefficient but understand that that's just a letter. We could use anything else here as well. We wouldn't use the letter r. We wouldn't use the letter m in all likelihood for fear of confusion but otherwise it would be fine. And then from there, our parametric equations come quite naturally. The x-coordinate of my position vector is going to be 3 plus 5t. The y-coordinate is going to be negative 2 plus 3t. And the z-coordinate is going to be negative 5 plus 7t. And so now we have both a vector equation and the parametric equations. And I got both of those from the symmetric. Okay, that's it. This is a pretty short lesson and relatively straightforward, although it's easy for students to get tied up over the symmetric equation. I feel like I've addressed one of the biggest sticking points there, which is what happens when one of your direction vector components is equal to zero, how to handle that. So you'll see more of that so keep that keep this lesson in mind when you see that